So in this video, I'm going to show you how to remap a Z20 LET or an Astra G Mark IV with a Z20 LEH. We're in my track car, so I need to remap this. It's just had a lot of work done to it. So yeah, today we're going to stick a stage 3.5 map on it, purely just to get it running a bit better so that I can take it to my mapper, who's then going to map it properly. So if you've got a VXR, slightly different setup. They run full CAN bus, different ECU. So you need tools like KESS, which I do use as well. But for this video, I'm going to show you MPPS. So if you have bought this online and you can't get it to run, number one thing you should do is run it as administrator. So we run the tool. To make it very clear, I'm not recommending that this is how you map a vehicle. Where you would use this is if you've done a big Astra build, for example, or you've gone from standard to VXR turbo, VXR injectors, um, or anything else, and you need to flash a map onto it to get it to your mapper. So I'm definitely not saying use this, cane your car about with on this map. That's definitely not what I'm saying at all. Also, if you're one of these people that likes to sit in car parks, rev in your car to, to look cool, this is really not the map for you. Um, so like I say, this will, it will be used as a stopgap until you can get to a proper mapper. I use R&D, um, but for me, I don't have a rolling road. I don't have all the stuff to do it here. So although I do use professional tools like WinOS or WinRLS, where you can monitor things like the AFR and you can adjust it and map it properly, for this, I'm literally gonna show you how to flash map it, like I say, to get you to a proper mapper. So firstly, when we open MPPS, it will give us the option of our vehicle make and model. So for this, we put Voxel Astra. I know that this is an ME 1.5.5 um, ECU. So first things we do is turn the ignition on. Very, very important. You should have your battery and the laptop on charge. If you get a power failure throughout this, it's gonna cause you major issues. So make sure it's on charge, definitely. We can see the voltage here is 12.28, which is all good. So now we're gonna ID our ECU, which we've now got. So I will always read the file that's on there and then save that file. So we'll show you that now. So you save that file, although that file is definitely not for this vehicle at the moment, you always save the file as a baseline. So you've got that to revert to if necessary. So now what we're gonna do is when we're ready to, to write our map, so we click write. Now I've got a bank of maps here. Some are better than others. I don't rate these maps at all. So again, if you bought these off eBay, I'm definitely not saying that you should use this um, and map your car with them. Here we've got ones like pop, pop, bang, bang. So if you're a showman or woman and you wanna show pop, pop, bang, bang, then yeah, it's a really good way to blow your engine up, especially with these maps. But for me, one of the maps that I've used before, which I know works well, is Stage 3.5. It's got rev cut. I'm not against rev cut. Obviously, I know how it works, but I'm not a major fan of it. Can't really see much use of it for me. But launch control at 4,300, it's all good. So we select that file, continue writing this file. We want to click OK. And now it's going to write that file to our ECU. So like I say, to make it clear again, I'm definitely not saying that these are the best things for your car. I'm also not saying that don't go to a mapper and just flash map your own vehicle. I don't do this for anyone apart from my own vehicles. Um, and like I say, if I want to do something more bespoke, then I'll use Winnows or a professional tool. But really, I'm restricted by not having, having a rolling road. But I would always go to R&D for mapping. Um, they really know what they're doing. They've mapped all my cars, and they include my high-power VXR. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't use anyone but R&D. So, like I say, this is a stopgap ready. It will get your engine running a lot better than the base map will. But these ECUs are very, very good. They're self-learning ECUs.
And then here, we can have a look at these different things. So we can have a look at the engine, transmission, chassis, body, infotainment. If you want to do things that change the mileage, for example, which is always fun, we go to the body. When we do that, we go through these, we can see instrument. So we click onto that, it will check the interface, and then it will give us the options here. So sometimes I have to wait for it to read, which we've now done. And here we can read any fault codes or anything like that. Let's just have a quick check actually and see if there is any fault codes. No stored codes, that's always good. We can clear the codes here if we need to. We can save them to a file for review later. But for now, we're going to go back. If we go to programming, we can go to programming and do the service interval setting. So we can change that, for example, if it's coming up inspection. All right, so we go into the EEPROM menu. Here we've got the old value of the mileage. We want to select new Astra G Sephira because this is after 99. And here we can put in whatever mileage we want. So, and that's always fun. We then do change kilometer value. If we look over here, and then see it will flash up and change it. Obviously there's a lot of stuff that we can program here. So we can look into airbag knock sensors and all that kind of stuff if we're really interested. If we go back, we go back on here. The car identification now gives things like the VIN number. Again, fault codes, stuff like that. But then what we're going to do in a second. So we start the car. Go back on here. 2002 again. Astra G. Now we can do engine. We've got a Z20 let. Just going to check the interface. And now here we can see that it's given us some stuff on that. What we can do now is output tests. So we can check the fuel pump relay, check the ignition coil in cylinder one, all the way up. Fuel tank ventilation valve test, electric throttle control test, all that kind of stuff. Um, and a lot of these, they do a, a turbo, well basically a, a solenoid valve delete, or a solenoid delete, a boost solenoid delete and a rear one. So we, obviously we're not going to be able to test that here, but if we want to test one of the ignition, ignition coils for example, here we can see we've got 13.9 volts on the battery which is what we'd expect. Here we can check the accelerator pedal position and whatever else we need, just drop down whatever we want. Calculated pedal position is at 0%. If we rev it, see that now changing. Cool, so that's all good. Check the fuel pump relay is active, but we'd expect that. I don't know, really and just check whatever we want from here. So that's it, this is ready for a road test. I hope you found it useful. As always, if you wanna see more videos like this, then subscribe to my channel. Um, I've got a bunch of these vehicles that I do all different videos on. So I hope you found it interesting. If you've got any questions, or if you're gonna do this yourself and hit any issues, then feel free to get in touch. I'm always happy to help, but yeah.